Hey everyone and welcome back to our study. We are in Genesis chapter 26 today and we're going to try to do it in five minutes. Thanks to everybody who's been watching and leaving comments. I really appreciate it. As always, the PDF for this uh, and, and all the notes are free on our website. There's a link down in the description. You can download them there and check out all the other resources and the books that we have available uh, on Amazon. When you purchase those books, that actually goes a long way in supporting this channel because I give the resources away for free. So that's one of the ways that I make a little money back. When did the events of Genesis chapter 26 take place? Well, using the birth date and the date that Jacob and Esau were born when Isaac was 60 years old and taking the date of Isaac's death, we can figure out that these events happened sometime between 1856 BC and 1716 BC, almost certainly towards the beginning of that period. In terms of our characters, we have Isaac, that is Abraham's son, and the husband of Rebekah. And the text tells us that he was very rich. God had really blessed him a lot. We then have Rebekah, who of course is Isaac's wife and the mother of Jacob and Esau. Then a guy named Abimelech. We've talked about an Abimelech before. As I mentioned in the last chapter, or the last couple, a few chapters back, Abimelech probably wasn't a proper name, but rather a title that was given to rulers of a certain area. This Abimelech was the king of Gerar. And then we have the herdsmen of Gerar. They were constantly arguing with Isaac over property rights to some wells that his servants had dug. These events took place in Gerar before Isaac went and settled in Beersheba. Now, Gerar, we don't know exactly where that was, but I've marked the general location on the map. And now for our outline. Our first section, verses 1 through 5, God makes some promises to Isaac and to his family. So there was a, there was a famine in the land of Canaan. And God told Isaac not to go down to Egypt. Evidently, that's where everybody was going. He said, don't go down to Egypt, but dwell in the land that I promised to your father Abraham, in the Canaan land. And God reiterated some of the promises that he had made previously to Isaac's father Abraham. And that was that he was going to make Isaac's family into a great nation, and that all the nations of the earth were going to be blessed through them. Our second section may give you some deja vu if you've been consistent with the study and you've been studying with us for a while. Isaac lies to Abimelech. This is verses 6 through 11. So Isaac settled in Gerar, and Isaac was afraid that the men of Gerar were godless and that they would kill him and take his wife because Rebekah is described as, quote, attractive in appearance. And so he lied, and he told them that Rebekah was actually his sister. When Abimelech, the king of the region, discovered uh, that Isaac and Rebekah were actually married, he rebuked Isaac for potentially endangering his people. What if one of the men had made advances on Rebekah? And so Abimelech threatened all of his citizens with death if they were to bother Isaac or Rebekah in any way. Now that may remind you of Abraham and Sarah doing almost the exact same thing to a guy named Abimelech, and that's because the stories are very, very similar, and this is probably a tactic that Isaac picked up from his father but uh, I'm not sure it was a very good one. And then in verses 12 through 25, we have some disputes about wells and about water. So Isaac was blessed by the Lord and he became very rich. He was so rich and powerful, in fact, that Abimelech asked him to leave Gerar. So he did. He settled in a place known as the Valley of Gerar and his servants dug a well there. When they had finished the well, the herdsmen of Gerar came and bickered over the well because they, they wanted it for themselves. So Isaac relented, and he went somewhere else, and his servants dug another well. Well, the herdsmen of Gerar came along, and they bickered about that well as well. So Isaac moved on, and he dug a third well. And on the third attempt, the herdsmen of Gerar didn't give him any more trouble. Isaac then moved to Beersheba, and he erected an altar to the Lord there. In verses 26 through 33, we read about a peaty, uh, uh, not a peaty, a treaty, <laughs> a treaty between Isaac and Abimelech. Abimelech recognized how powerful and rich Isaac had become, and so he proposed that they make a, a pact of peace, not to fight one another. And so Isaac hosted a feast, and in the morning they made their treaty and gave their oaths to one another. And then the last two verses talk about something completely different, verses 34 and 35. They talk about Esau's wives. When Esau was 40 years old, he married two Hittite women. Their names were Judith and Basemath. <laughs> and their union, quote, made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. So that is chapter 26. There's quite a lot going on in that chapter. Now let's talk about our application. Abraham and Isaac's life is actually a lot like our own. 
Abraham and Isaac went around kind of as nomads, moving from place to place, waiting for God to fulfill his promises to finally give them a permanent home. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 9 says, By faith Abraham went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. There's a sense in which Christians are also pilgrims and nomads. We sojourn on earth for a time in anticipation of a permanent home that God has promised us in heaven. And it's going to be a great day when we finally get the chance to put our burdens down and our luggage down in a place that we will call home for eternity.